Now let's come back to the code and I guess we are done with this model. This looks pretty good to me. If we find that we need to add anything else and obviously we have to add the functionality. Right now it's not doing anything but we're going to add it. So simply close this one, close this one and come back to the navigation. And here we have to create this component as well, token list. So let's quickly start working on it. Simply come here and here we have to receive the props. So the data and we have to receive this one as well. So these are the two props we are receiving and now we have to receive a couple of things from react so let's come here so let's import the image and let's do the internal import we have to import the css file that's coming from the same directory we have to import the entire images and that's coming from the assets folder so those are the external internal imports we have now let's create a couple of variables so data and this will say one two three four and seven so right now we have no data which we can use to render the token list that how many token a user have in his account and how many types of token he has so for the time being just for the designing purpose we are going with this demo array but everything we go to make it dynamic so let's come here let's start writing the jsx we'll take a div it will have a class called style and it will call token list inside that we'll have this p it will have a class called style dot token list dash close and in that we're going to have an on click function and we're going to call this set open token to false because when someone will open this model means our open token is true and we have to turn is false to close it so that's the logic and here we are missing the arrow let's provide it so that looks pretty good now in that we're going to simply provide the image so we have to provide the close images all tag we'll say close with and we have to provide the height as well 550 that looks pretty good to me now come here we have to take a div it will have a class called style dash token list dash title in that we're going to take this h2 we'll say your token list looks pretty good we have this h2 and down below we're going to render the entire token so right now we have taken the demo data and we're going to use it for time being so we have that array we're going to loop over it element i and it's a string return and we're going to take a div it will have a class style dot token list dash box it will have another div it will take dot token list box info inside that we'll have this p and we're going to provide this class style dot token list box info symbol symbol and inside that we're going to provide the text hey right now we don't have anything any data for the symbol so right now we are going with this hard code value hey will come down and here we're going to provide this span and inside this span we're going to provide that how many token a user have so let's do hard code and we can provide the coin name the token name itself so that's the entire demo dynamic data and you can see right now nothing is happening so to see things are looking good we have to come here and we have to turn this to true because right now it's false so make it true and save it come back and here you can see we have the list of all the arrays so total, all together we have taken the seven array and it's rendering seven times we have the name we have the icons and we have the name and the everything is looking pretty good to me so pretty good come back to the code and simply do side by side and we can so we can start working on the css let's bring this side and come here and we have to grab the let's come here and we have to grab the class and let's come back to the token list and the css file and now we have to target that so we'll say token list position is going to be absolute because we want it to be on the right hand side not on the left hand side so position absolute width is going to be 20 ram border radius 0.5 ram background our primary color margin top is going to be 2 ram margin left is going to be 66.4 ram and padding is going to be 1 ram so that's how it will look it's far on the right hand side but we're going to make it responsive for the time being 
so make it on a full screen so that's how it will look on our desktop and you might be wondering that from where i'm getting these numbers these numbers are not magical because i have already built this project and i found that which value i have to put for placing the dev and the boxes okay so we have the main token list and now we're going to tag work on the other one so we'll target the token list title well it's going to be 100 percent padding is going to point to ram and one ram font width is going to be 900 and line height is going to be zero cursor color it's going to be our second color second primary color we have to target our font size 0.8 ram border radius 0.5 ram that looks good let's come down we have to target the close button itself and this time we're going to say position is going to be absolute right is going to be minus one ram cursor pointer top is going to be minus two ram z index on top of everything so that's how it will look pretty good come here target the token list box position relative cursor pointer border bottom one pixel solid and we have our this light color it's actually a second primary color but i have added the opacity 53 that's how to look let's target the box info display is going to be grid grid template column one fr five fr gap is going to be one ram align item center that looks pretty good come down we have to target the box info p span and font size is going to be let's say font width is going to be 900 color is going to be our second primary and i want to provide some space from the right hand side 0.5 ram would be enough okay that looks good come down we have to target the box info symbol and background color is going to be primary color padding is 0.5 ram and border radius 0.5 ram and we'll have our color to primary and font width is going to be 700 so that's how it will look it looks already beautiful you can see everything is working fine and don't need to worry that this data is going to be dynamic once you will log and it will fetch all the data from your metamask and it will display so that looks pretty good to me and okay so we have our symbol let's check the responsiveness this is how it will look on a mobile and now let's add the media query so let's come here and i can go back to into the nav bar and we have written already media query so i'm going to simply copy this copy this one and come back because this is the breakpoint i'm going to use in the entire application so that looks good simply come here copy this one and we have to first what is the width we have provided so we have to set this margin left to zero that looks good let's say minus to no minus one zero zero is better zero is better now we have to take this one token list close and we have to adjust the placement of this so we'll say right is going to be one ram so it will come on this side and we can easily move to two that's how it will look and here we have the width so simply copy that one and paste not here we have to paste here and the width i want is let's say 90 percent so that's look good 100 percent responsive and that's looking pretty good now what we can do is close this one and come here so that's what we have now now turn this one remove this and save it right now you can see we don't have and that's how it will look and right now we are not connected there is no account so it's this is this is the one which is displaying because we have no, we haven't written any logic for the account on which we're going to build the logic so when a user is connected then on that time we're going to display this token list but if the user is not connected we're going to display this connect wallet option actually we don't have the address so that's why we can't able to do anything like that right now but everything will work fine so if i provide this so this is the button where we go to attach the functions for closing and opening both the models so let's change this is the function we have here and that's how it will look and let's come up here and what i'm going to do is so if i turn this to true 
if I click on this this one is also opening and okay let's remove this one save it and you can see right now it's opening remove this save it and if I turn this to false if I click on this this is how it will open and right now it will not opening here we can full the screen so things are looking good everything is working fine we have successfully designed our component we're going to build that logic because right now we don't have the data so right now we can't able to build the logic although we have can do that but we have to write a lot of custom codes which i don't want to do it